So if you're in the military, right, and you go to Afghanistan, war turn or not, just because you're on war torn territory, or because you're in war torn times, or um, it's considered a hostile time in that area, you come back, you now apply for PTSD because of the stress and the rest you were under in those moments of constantly having to live with your life on the line, constantly having to walk outside and watch your back, constantly having to watch your partner's back, constantly being told what to do by your commanders under strenuous circumstances that normal people wouldn't normally be able to function under. Except for the black man. Every motherfucking day of his life. Same shit. But the same motherfuckers that tell you, you all right. Tell you, you ain't perfect. Can I get a check? Right. What my PTSD is, you know what I'm saying? Can I get a check? <laughs> Yeah. Your diagnosis alone got me flip-flopped and fucked up. Can I get a check? Please. I need a check. But then when niggas talk about these topics, we crazy, bro. When we bring them to light, we crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get when people say, I'm not perfect. I get the logic. But ask yourself, why is that acceptable? And, and to whose standards are you basing are you, it off of? Because, I mean, and then when you say where I've seen, okay, so then my next question is, I don't believe in seeing. You just live in your life. I don't believe in seeing. I know right from wrong, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to let what right and wrong can condemn me to, to the point I'm negatively affecting who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. I'm not out here robbing nobody. I'm not out here selling dope to niggas who just going ballistically bananas. Like, but even if that's what you do, who am I to, bro? If a nigga tell me right now, if if if, it's, if we on the line, right, mm -hmm. and say I've done everything, I I've done everything. I've worked. Say I get fired tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And say my landlord come to me, I'm putting you out tomorrow. And say I look at my refrigerator and I ain't got no food tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And my son come look at me, the lights go out today. Mm -hmm. The water get cut off today. What you think I'm going to do? Like, do something. I mean... I'm going to get it, my nigga. I don't give a... Man, I don't give a fuck, nigga, how... Oh, that's wrong, are you? I go to hell. And I'm out of town. Because what won't happen as long as I got breath is him won't and me not get his knee. Now, I'm not out here robbing nobody. I'm not, I, I get up and go to work every day, bro. Right. Now, but at a point, when I was robbing and doing all that shit, bro, I didn't, I, like I told you, bro, that shit didn't mean nothing to me, bro. Right. Uh, I don't smoke crack, bro, because I seen strong ass niggas sucking dick. I don't fuck with her, because I seen strong ass niggas sucking dick. I don't fuck with meth, because I seen strong ass niggas sucking dick. One thing that co correlates homosexuality with me, hardcore drugs. <laughs> I ain't never seen a nigga getting drunk sucking cock. Unless he was sucking cock before he got drunk. <laughs> I've seen strong-minded men, bro, go straight hope. And that's going to be a great segue into the next the next topic. Um, how, how old were you when you went in the first time? 17? Uh, 17, yeah. 17 years old? When when you got out officially, you've never been back since. Uh, so I got, I went in the your last time ever being locked. Uh, up. have I been back to prison? No, no, jail. The age when last time you was ever locked up. Period. You just didn't have freedom. So I got locked up when I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did uh seventeen, probably eighteen. Got out. 
right after my 18th birthday. Right. Um, from that point, all up until 2001, I was free. Okay. Uh, 2001, I got convicted okay. of uh, conspiracy to commit organized gang activity, yeah. robbery. This is what you went in for at 17. They yeah. actually got the conviction at 21. Right. OJ okay. shit didn't last that long. Gotcha. <laughs> it was crazy. OJ... Okay. Uh, OJ murdered motherfuckers, <laughs> got away with it, and his trial was shorter than mine, and his bail <laughs> was more expensive than mine, but hell, he had the money, so did I, bitch. We was playing real games back then. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I got out in, two, in 2001 when I was convicted. Mm -hmm. So, this is what happened. So, I went to trial this whole time. Right, right. Uh, back and forth trial, giving me court dates. Uh, at one point, I got pulled over uh, not too long before Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when I got pulled over, they ran my ID. Man, I had the SWAT team. I had been going back and forth to court. Them motherfuckers lost my paperwork in the system. Didn't notify me I had a court date. And a warrant out for your arrest. Aggravated robbery, bro. Conspiracy to commit robbery was gang activity. Me and my homeboys in the car. Them niggas panicking. They come back to the car. Man, you got to... Uh, <laughs> I had a 74 Ford LTD at this time. It's, it's snow on the ground. It's cold. I had no AC. <laughs> When them motherfuckers locked, when them motherfuckers ran my ID, when I tell you them hoes came, fam, say, man, I ain't really know what was going on. Because, like I said, I was in standards, always going back and forth to trial. Right. No I switched, I switched address. I made sure I gave my address at all moments because I always in time. Compliant, right. And I wasn't on probation. I was just on bond. Mm -hmm. These hoes, when, I, when they get me out the car, they was acting crazy. Like, get out the car. I'm like, man, what the fuck going on? Man, you got a warrant? Yeah. I'm like, man, a warrant for some goddamn tickets got y'all acting like, you ain't got no ticket, you man. I'm like, man, like, these hoes acting real boss. And I'm like, man, chill the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Now, I I never, now this is crazy. At this time, I never want, I never feared for my life at that moment. Like, at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had a warrant. Y'all got your guns out. They took me down. Uh, I was so at peace and calm with the shit. I called my mama and I was like, hey, I need you to call my lawyer. What the fuck? And they transferred me down. I get down. I was in jail like maybe three or four days. They let me out. Like, I talked to the judge. I'm like, Yana, all the paperwork has been submitted. Like, okay, the, dis the district attorney lost the information and didn't mail it to me. My lawyer has provided them with all the information they needed to get a hold of me. They didn't even get the court date to my lawyer. So my lawyer could have reached out to me. So they dropped the ball and you had this. I was released, my nigga. Yeah. My bond was re fucking stated. I'm not always going to say the system has fucked me, fam. I'm going to say the allegations that got me there was fuckery. Like like a motherfucker. That organized crime shit. I mean, I didn't do it. Yeah, I I didn't do that. Right, right, right. I didn't do that. Right. Like. Well, it don't nothing else matter then, because if this what they took you for, and I they, didn't and do, you that, didn't do that. Then it's uh, a failed system at all. Right. So that's why I always feel like the system has failed me. Right. But I've never been a nigga to cry wolf. I'm gonna tell you the nigga who snitched on me, who niggas in court, the nigga had. Five other felonies. They was talking about getting that nigga 10 years each felony. Mm -hmm. Or 25 years. He was looking at 25 to life. It's life. For all of them. It's life. They told the motherfucker, you testify against him, we're running all this shit five years in CC. All concurrent. You already been in three and a half. You'll be out in a few months. All you got to do is, when you testify to him, you'll go back down and finish the rest of your time over here. And you'll never have to go back down and get the chain. Son, like Mariah Carey. What? This was your partner. Uh, it wasn't my partner, nigga oh, okay. I knew. Okay. Nigga I knew. I gave him a ride. You yeah, know what I'm saying? He, yeah. Well, he actually rolled with us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I gave him, gave him a ride. I don't remember how the nigga... Uh, I don't remember. We went to Wave Village. And it was for uh, Cecil. 
Matter of fact, it was Cecil. We we went to take Cecil and them home, and he rode with us. I had a short, I had a long bed Chevy S10, the blue, the white with the blue stripe, the big thick blue stripe. Everybody had five speed automatic, five speed, five speed, five speed. Five speed. First thing I learned how to drive. Gotcha. The motherfuckers. I was assistant manager at Church's Chicken. I've always had a job, man. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. That's one thing my people has always instilled with me is uh, some type of work, work ethic, mm -hmm. like work ethic, man. That's why, like I told you, bro, like I'm a match intensity. Right. You, you say. And that. I typically would probably go overboard because. How many interviews did I tell you I got you like, like real talk? I can get them on the phone and be like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, yeah. You so uh, I'm the same way all the way around, even with my partners, with women. Like this perfection thing, fam, it ain't just a, show, it ain't just an ego shit, my nigga. Mm -hmm. It's because I step, I step a certain way. I'm not saying I don't do shit. Mm -hmm. But if that's all you got to say about me, well, bitch, what do you do? So if you do that or worse, then how, why would I listen to your definition of me? Or if the motherfucker who wrote the dictionary is a worse hypocritical motherfucker than me, why would I apply his knowledge to my life? That's all I'm saying. It's negative. It's rooted in negativity. Me telling you you ain't perfect is not to uplift you. It ain't to give you some type of more reality about life. You're right. What is me telling you you're not perfect doing to you? As a human. He's all negative, bro. So then why would I let that in my life? Why would I receive that? You should. But I'm crazy. You're gonna wake a lot of people on this interview, man. It's, 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 it's not even to wake, bro. It's just to show people like, okay, I'm crazy. This is why. And if this is crazy, I think we all are. And if we all aren't, maybe them the motherfuckers we need to really be worried about. So the thing about Hillary Clinton and the Donald Trumps, mm -hmm. Bro, I'm from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Like, and when I say from, like, I've lived there enough to, like, bro, we had race riots in my high school. Like, bro, I was in juvenile, my nigga. Like, I went to juvenile for a race riot at my high school. 16 years old. I was a fucking ninth grader, my nigga. Mm -hmm. I let you interview my mama getting the phone. She'll tell you she got a phone call from the high school. I'm sorry. Yeah. The high school, because high no, it was 10th. Arkansas was 10th. 10th, 11th, and 12th. A 10th grader. A 10th grader. I'm talking about first year in high school. My mama got a call from the school talking about your son is the head of every game in this school. And there's nothing that goes down or there's nothing negative that happened that he doesn't know about or isn't in on. I'm not making this shit up, fam. I wish, I wish I was. I remember I was in school the motherfucking day she got the call, my nigga. I went home. She like, what you do now? And I'm like, what you mean? She like, I just had a conference. So in Arkansas, how we had <laughs> North, Central, and South Principal. And then you had an assistant dean. Okay, so there's four administrators. And then you had the teachers committee, and you had these people. They had a phone conference with my mama. Oh, Lord. They couldn't kick me out for good because they could never, they could only assume. <laughs> I mean, I had friends, bro. Like, I'm loyal, bro. Like, if you hurt me, if you talk about hurting me, bro, I can't be responsible for what may happen to you, my nigga. Like, I, I love hard when I love people, bro. And they know, like, nigga, I'm going to go to the back, nigga. Like, I'm going to go to as far as them to losing my life because it's a, it's a real purpose. 
That's why when I say my face card, I can go to VA, my nigga. I got niggas in VA that'll knock you off playing behind me. Like, real talk. Like, don't, don't. I remember going through, I was in VA when I first, like, when we first moved there, my ex wife was in the military. She got stationed there. I got cool with these uh, cats. And, uh, Kevin Price. Uh, I, I met these cats at the store, and uh, I was flamed up, fam. Like, <laughs> banging hard. Not banging. I was a, I was I, not banging. I just love the color red. So yes, at one point I did bang out red. Um, uh, when I was living in Texarkana, I got put down with GD, like I told you, Charles Ragnar. That's one of the other people I told you that, that really orchestrated uh, Charles Ragnar. Mm -hmm. uh, when he put me down, uh, he wound up leaving the hood. And when he le left the hood, he wound up moving to New Orleans. I mean, Louisiana, okay. uh, Shreveport. Uh, he came back every now and then, but he, uh, the, niggas, the niggas I got down with didn't like me. They had always had it in for me. Uh, and a few situations happened where uh, even when I got jumped in, like, I didn't get a, it wasn't a normal jump in. Like, I was beating the dog shit out them niggas. So them niggas, they, one nigga hit me in the head with something. And then when I fell, niggas started stomping me out. And the nigga I called, he, you know, Charles Ragnar, I called him nigga my OG, but... He, he, like, nah, fuck that, fam. Like, he, he started pushing them niggas, and he was finna fight them niggas. Like, damn, fam, this ain't how we jump niggas in, man. Like, damn, I told my nigga get in for love, not, like, damn, like, this, and I told him, like, bro, this don't seem like love, my nigga. And so them niggas, like, nah, my bad, fam. You know how they, we just got crunk, you know, we got out of hand. And I'm like, damn, all right. Them same niggas wound up trying to rob me, fam. Same GD niggas. I found out because of my blood cousin, he's blood, uh, Putty Ray. Uh, just so happened, uh, we was in a situation where some news got back to him, and I worked with him at Tyson Chicken Plant. And uh, him and Stan, like I was running with these niggas hard because we caught the work van together. Mm -hmm. While everybody else was still going to high school, I was, I was, I lied about my age and got a job up there at the Tyson Chicken Plant. Chasing money. And I didn't even have to lie about my age because I had a work permit because my mama signed up for it. I had a driving license at the age of uh, 13, 14. Uh, I had a hardship. My tea lady let me get it. Uh, my whole purpose for even ever working was because, you have you ever heard of the brand Cross Colors? Mm -hmm. uh, you remember Jay West and Amal? Uh, I wanted a Cross Color outfit out of Jay West. And she took me to uh, to Montgomery Wars. Man, that was the full series. I said, Mom, I'm not going to Montgomery Wars, Mom. I don't want this <laughs> shit this time. Right. Right. So, mama, I can't wear that no more. I'm tired of getting picked on and getting bullied at school. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of getting jumped. I'm tired. And she didn't hear me. She didn't hear me, fam. And she went about the shit anyway. And, you know, I was going to school, fighting. And, you know, I just said, fuck it, man. I, I, I talked to my mentor, uh, Charles Burnett uh, Decker. And, uh... Is a white Christian dude. Uh, uh, as far as religion, man, I, it, I can tell you it's all over the place for me because uh, uh, Mike Huckabee was my pastor at one point. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I can tell you uh, sisters uh, stories about his daughter sucking dick in high school, like Sarah Huckabee, the bitch that was in the White House. I know specific stories about her sucking dick in the boys' locker room under the bleachers. Right. Like, <laughs> life's a motherfucker, man. Because mm -hmm. you never know who you who you wind up knowing, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, when he told me, we was at work and he was like, man, <clears throat> you need to quit fucking with them niggas. And I'm like, well, what you mean, Ken Folk? Because I actually grew up with them niggas mm -hmm. on, uh, on that side. Uh, Jackie Howe, Stan Howe, Bird Howe. I mean, I grew up with all them niggas. Like, I grew up in Ozan. I just wind up getting affiliated everywhere else because my mama kept moving. But my first planet 
Rock in Texarkana was Ozan Courts. Like, I can tell you the time this bitch came to my mama house because she was fucking my stepdaddy and uh, her and her homegirls thought they was finna jump my mama and mold all three of them hoes. I'm talking about, I'm standing up, I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, damn. Yeah, my, mama, man, my mama, my mama, my mama four nine, fam. My stepdad was like six, two, six, three. Mm-hmm. Like, the bit, you know, and, and they, you know, my mama mowed them hoes. And I can tell you, first time I hunched the brow, man, it was in that, in that, so my mindset, like, I grew up in them, around them cats. And when he came and told me, like, man, you know where it is, because I mean, you know, he heard everything. You know, he yeah, was like yeah, a, a, your a blood big. Probably was telling you, you yeah, GDs you got down. Yeah, they finna, they finna set you. Up. Yeah. And uh, they didn't know that he was my cousin. Like, these your actual bloods. These my blood cousins. Yeah, yeah, you like, got you, got you, got like, you, got you. Family. our family. Right. So our family in the in the in the bloodline, mm-hmm. we cousin cousins. Right, right, like. Right. We don't, uh, like my great auntie, or my auntie may be they auntie, mm-hmm. and which they may be they mama's sister. Mm-hmm. So we all like, mm-hmm. and he told me, so like, hey man, uh, you need to be careful with them niggas, man. And see, he like a year or two older than me, so he like, he like a little older than me too. But he was like, man, you need to be careful with them niggas. He was like, well, I was like, man, what you talking about? Them my niggas. He was like, them ain't your niggas. Like, word around, nigga. And so I didn't listen to him at that point. And I'm gonna tell you, I didn't listen to him. I wind up uh ho ass nigga named Head, Lil Head Ho ass. Uh I wind up going uh I wanna in the hood mm-hmm. to get me some weed at one point. I was with my nigga Corey Robinson. Uh we was walk we had walked from our hood to the over there and shit. Uh to get some weed. And the nigga was supposed to get me some weed. The nigga come back with the weed and when he come back with the weed he had his big brothers in there like these niggas go hard mm-hmm. like these niggas they, they ain't nothing known for fighting I mean they, ain't, they only known for fighting like but they only fight niggas like me by they self had niggas mm-hmm. like or niggas they think that's by they self <coughs> Not knowing, like, Putty Ray, Jackie, like, them niggas my cousins. And, um, I went over there to get some weed, man. Nigga took my $40, man. And think, being that young, like, having $40 at that day and time. Man, that nigga come back. When he come back, I'm like, damn, what's up, Kim Folk? You know what I'm saying? What's up, GD? Man, fuck all that GD shit, nigga. I'm like, what you mean? Nigga, you ain't no GD, nigga. We don't respect you, nigga. I'm like, what? Nigga, we ain't never liked you, nigga. You always thought you was better than us, nigga. And I'm like, nigga, what? Nigga, ever since y'all moved out, nigga, when y'all moved over down Hickory and Lower Street, nigga, y'all ain't no... I'm like, my nigga, are you fucking... Man, that nigga hit me in my jaw and took out running, and that nigga brothers ran up on me, bro. Them niggas jumped me, bro. I was like... I couldn't do shit because this nigga brothers was like 20-something. Mm-hmm. And at this age, I'm probably like 13, 14, 15, maybe. Mm-hmm. Even I'm, I might be 16. This shit I ain't in my 20s. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when them niggas jump me, you know what I'm saying? No, you know what? I was 17. I'm lying. I was 17. I know for a fact I was. And uh, when them niggas jump me, that shit got back to my kid for a putty immediately. Immediately. He say, nigga, that's the last motherfucking time, nigga, you out here by yourself. Because I wasn't scared of niggas, man. Like I told you, I got to that point where, nigga, let's bang, nigga. Mm-hmm. And I, I banged three or four niggas. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I was still timid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you still had to, like, I wasn't just off rip. Like, you still had to get me there. Nine times out of ten, you done embarrassed the shit out of me. And that's really what got me there. It mm-hmm. ain't. Like, you done punched me in the face, spit on me. Like, you done done some humiliating shit. Yeah, I'm now ready. Yeah. And Putty was like, nigga, never again, nigga. 
That nigga said, never motherfucking again, nigga. He said, nigga, if I ever hear you letting a nigga embarrass you, he said, you our cousin, man. And he said, we go hard, nigga. Off the muscle. He said, come around with me from now. I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, kid folk. Yeah. No, nigga, it ain't even a question no more. That's what it is. Man, him and Stan Harrison, not the wrestling Stan. I'm talking about, uh, they know what Stan, tall Stan. Uh, when I live life. You got your get back? Oh. Get back wasn't even shit. I got money. <laughs> I got money. Yeah. I learned what it meant to. I, I got. I, I got back. Time. I got back. Yeah. I got back. Yeah. Even now, I got back. Yeah. Look at look at you. Yeah, I got back. And he hate his life every day. But uh. I can't, so, he, he, you know, we did shit, man, and the turn on was, like, just going through seeing shit, like, I was used to, like, shout out to my cousin Fantasy, like, as a drunk, like, they had me really moving and grooving as a drunk, like, I was a drunk young, uh, I've always hung around, like, older dudes, whenever I hung around dudes my age, typically situations, like, whole ass situations, I told you, like, Cause they was all they never seen the bigger picture. They mm -hmm. always looked at what I had, and because at my age I wasn't supposed oh, to have yeah, shit yeah, like that. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I was having shit like niggas a few years older than me. Like that nigga that was 20 years old. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and most of the niggas I hung out with, like that, really fucked with me. Like they was older. Mm -hmm. They got it. Mm -hmm. So. uh Man, I used to go through, man, I remember me and Stan, man, we was fucking these hoes together. Like, me and Putty, like, nigga, we went, we all three went to this party, nigga, these, it's a crip party. Crip party. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna repeat that, it's a crip party. My nigga Stan fucking the head nigga bitch at the party. The nigga didn't know my nigga Stan was fucking this bitch. At the party. They invite us to the party. We all work at Tyson Chicken Plant together. Yeah. They invite us to the party. We the only blood niggas in the party. At this time, yeah, I'm, I'm flamed. I got red rag down. Like, yeah, yeah. I even dyed my hair. Uh, Sandy, uh, Sandy Sunset Red. Uh, I had a, uh, I had a, a platform. Yeah. Uh, this part, was, nah, I'm sorry. I had the Tony Terry. This part was red. Yeah. Uh, Nigga, nigga know what you want to say. Light skin. I mean, dark skin, light skin, nigga. Yeah, dark yeah. skin, light skin. It's all niggas. Dark skin, light skin. Come here, nigga. Because yeah. I used to, I, my mama was so light skin, like, I didn't understand how I was dark. So I hated my color growing up. Mm -hmm. And then I had bad acne. Mm -hmm. So I had to, my, my insecurities had to become what made me, uh, now you say a big nigga. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what got me in the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was in the gym, like, habitually. Uh, bro, uh, I could squat like 1,500 pounds, bro, like at a young age. And all because my nigga Greg would always challenge me, like, nigga, you can't get it. You can't get it. Not even once, nigga. Like, them niggas push me, man. Like, bro, I could kick a door off the hinge with, I ain't even have to go full-fledged, bro. Like, I got known for shit like that, bro. So it, 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 it just became, like, the shit I was doing, it just kind of became innate. So with me doing that, like, when I tell you, like, I didn't want a family, like, bro, it just never entered my mind. Mm -hmm. It's not that I didn't want it. It's just I never I never thought about it too long. Mm -hmm. The only thing I ever thought about doing was, bro, was getting up, going to work, getting money. and getting that money when I leave work. And it, I wasn't... I, I wasn't work making money thinking about the next dog. I didn't even give a fuck about bros, like... I could have, I could, bro, I could have fucked so many females, bro. Like real talk, niggas would think I fucked so many females, right? I ain't fuck none of them, fam. The females I was fucking wasn't even on niggas' radar. I was some real talk. 
My nigga Theodis Berry, man, we wind up beefing. We was cool for a long time. I wind up fucking a, 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 a chick he was dating. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I can't think of it, bro. Man, he know. <laughs> I wind up fucking her, right? I didn't know they was fucking around. Right. And uh, he was cheating on her with this other chick that I didn't know he was fucking with. Mm -hmm. And I was cool with the other chick. Like, me and her was cool. Mm -hmm. But I knew she was fucking with another nigga. Mm -hmm. And me and that nigga was cool. Because mm -hmm. I actually introduced them together. Okay. But I didn't know yeah, right. Theo was fucking her. Because everybody kind of knew Theo was fucking with this other chick. Mm -hmm. But see, this other chick, I didn't know because it was my first year in high school. Okay. You hear me? I guess. These singers and, and juniors. <laughs> like, so... I'm low key being me. Mm -hmm. But niggas was so like, I was so. Ahead of your time. Man. What, what, what was that relationship like with? Like you said, because you was moving at your pace and you was getting, you know, I had some self the energy from niggas that was older than you. The older crowd was taking on to you. How did motherfuckers your age that couldn't keep up feel? Them, so I had niggas like, I had some niggas who, like, uh, little head who hated. I had some niggas like that I thought was cool in the motherfucker, right? I'm running with these niggas. I come out, come out now. We grown men. Them niggas was plotting on me. They was just waiting for their moment and just thankful they never got it. I might have been one of them niggas with their head in the back of a wagon somewhere because I was trusting the wrong niggas. Okay. R.I.P. Larry Robinson, that's how my homeboy did. He got his head blew out, fucking with his in it, fucking with his ops, as niggas called it. Uh, bro, Texacana was hell for a long time, fam. Like, I can tell you, I lost homeboys. Mm -hmm. Like, Dayon Green, AKA Tech. Like, Larry Robinson. Like, man, we lost niggas. Like, I can only think of two right now, but man, we lost niggas, man. Right. And them the two that impacted me the most, cause I knew Larry Robinson was my cousin. Tech, I knew that nigga. Like we, I actually went to uh, pre-K with Tech. Grew up with Tech throughout the years. Tech wound up staying on the College Hill side, and then wound up having transferring to the North Heights. So I knew him, Tech, and then I knew Danyon Green when he got over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I knew like, and it was crazy because he wound up getting killed because one of his partners. Pushed him in the middle of the motherfucking gunfire. He didn't even want to go to the club that night. And they killed that nigga, man. But, uh, I had niggas that I thought my nigga got the plan. Right. Real talk. Like, uh, but I can tell you, the niggas I ran with that I thought got the plan, I'm not going to say they didn't get the plan. They just also had their own ulterior motives. And though everything lined up to be what it was, though they 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 played their part well, like my nigga, we 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 rolled on niggas. And like I ain't gonna lie, they would get mad because I would know niggas from other sets or other areas. And I wouldn't I would play favors, but it's like, bro, I, I'm not finna allow y'all to go uh to that point with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that cost me, especially between in Texas County, kind of Arkansas, and Texas County, kind of Texas. Being I lived on both sides, I knew niggas from both sides. Mm -hmm. Like niggas respected me from both sides. Mm -hmm. Like it cost me. Like it cost me. It cost me, man. Mm -hmm. Like because it's like being Switzerland, right? Well, your friend just because you know what I'm saying. Your friend might not be my friend. Type situation. And that was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. That was the beef. Keeping folks off of other folks. Ahead. If anything, that was the beef. On top of me knowing females from both sides. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. now, I can tell you it was times that <coughs> I did some whole ass shit. Like, I remember one time me and my homeboy Charles Raglan, we worked at Tyson Chicken Plant together. Now, I'm, I don't shoot dice right. at all. 
I tried. I'm straight. Yeah. The Man, that shit, fuck the emotions. Me and my nigga, I got a paycheck. And we was working at Tyson Chicken Plant, getting all the overtime in the world. I want to say that check might have been like eight, nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Whatever it was at that point in yeah, time, yeah, my yeah, life. Yeah, that was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. And this might have been when we, minimum wage was four dollars and fourteen cent. You hear me? Yeah, you worked hard, got two miles on you. Whatever the fuck it was, man. He like, man. So I cashed my check and shit, right? And uh, we take our lunch break, and we we take just fake fuck. We wasn't gonna go back after we got our check. Man, I sit in the van with this nigga. We was sitting there chilling for the longest. And all of a sudden, the nigga get to shaking the dice in his hand. Man, let's shoot something. I'm like, nah, I'm straight. My nigga Marcus go hard with the dice. He go hard with the dice. Charles go hard with the dice. These niggas go hard. But I don't. I don't even have the mental fortitude to put to try to remember uh what I just rolled, it, yeah. uh, nigga. If I get the rolling, nigga, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. Go on, okay. go on, go on, go on. I'm yeah. good. But I'm not gonna remember my point. That, does that come from your dyslexia? I think so. Gotcha. So it's yeah, certain, you. yeah. yeah. yeah so, you're to stay in your line. but the but I betting on my niggas bet back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell your ass, I got yeah. some niggas that I put money on every time. Yeah. I go to Vegas with niggas right now. Yeah, man. That nigga Charles pulled out his like, come on, let's shoot a little something. I'm like, nah, I'm good. And then, like, come on, man, you scared? I'm like, nah, I ain't scared, nigga. You know, I just don't shoot dice. Yeah. Oh, man, I ain't gonna take all your money. Just shoot something. I'm like, all right, whatever. Man, I shot my whole motherfucking chick. I probably shot two or three chicks. If they, if I... <laughs> Trying to give back what you lost. Like, steady digging the hole. And that nigga knew it, man. I ain't gonna lie. I think the nigga. I, I can't. I don't know this for a fact. Right. I think either that nigga had tricked that. I can't remember putting my goddamn hands on. Every time I touch dice, man, I crapped out. Yeah. Every time. Fifty hundred dollars gone. Man, I tell you, that nigga. I was like, man, you're not finna get my old check. Wind up. Nigga wind up breaking into my crib, my T lady crib when I was cause my my wonder. Niggas I always knew how my house was. Charles did? Yeah. Stole my wallet and shit, threw it on top of a building. Uh the people that cleaned it, uh it was a bazaar. People that cleaned the roof every uh few days, found my wallet, threw my wallet on the ground. Uh somebody wound up finding my wallet, getting it back to me. How I found out he broke in my crib, somebody wound up seeing it and told me. It's was was Charles? I know y'all worked there at Tyson. He he was the GD too. Yeah, he GD too. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he the one who put me down. Remember I told right, you? Right, 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 right. Yeah. And so when he, when he saw everybody whoop your ass, he like, nah, we don't get down like this. Right, he ended right. up robbing you anyway. Later on down the line. Later on down the line. What kind of shit is that, man? <laughs> and guess what? What's that? We talked. Mm -hmm. I talked. I was just in Shreveport uh, like a month or so back. Like we straight. Yeah. So, you know, all this is said, but we straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, everybody's, you know, and the reason why I say I made a whole ass move is because, like, I ain't get that nigga, I gave that nigga a little money. I ain't get a nigga no more money. I, I, man, I want to say I burned off, nigga. Yeah. Like, now I ain't giving up no, no more money. I even quit fucking with the nigga, stop, start dodging the nigga. And that's how the nigga wind up, you know, nigga knew how to get in my house. And they got in my house, uh, went in my room. And I did, I'm going to show you, now I'm a young nigga, right? Mm hmm. Living in my mama house. I'm going to show you how good and how balling I was, fam. Never even knew it. I thought I just lost my wallet in the mall somewhere. You was just having shit. You didn't even realize so it was much. Done. He had stole more shit out of my house. Again, say, my nigga, everything you think you do to hurt me, it's probably not even a thought to me. Yeah. 